in this problem, we have a pendulum that's swinging back and forth. And it's got a mass of 0.43 kilograms. The length of the string is 0.95 meters. And we started off by holding it at an angle of theta equal to 6.5 degrees before releasing it and letting it go. Okay, and we're asked three things. What is the angular frequency? What is the total energy of the system? And what is the velocity when the ball is at the bottom of the arc? So, very first thing we'll do is angular frequency. For a pendulum, the angular frequency omega is equal to root g over l. Thing. g is just 9.8 meters per second squared. Length of our pendulum, 0.95 meters that gives us an answer of, after rounding to our two significant digits, 10 radians per second. Okay, let's move on to B. Now we want to figure out what our total energy is of this system. Now, this is going to be a little trickier. We have total energy equal to, total energy initial, is equal to initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy. Now, initially, we're holding this pendulum bob up here. So our kinetic energy is going to be zero because it's not moving. One half mv squared, zero. Velocity is zero. Potential energy is mgh. So we can say that our total energy is going to be m. G H. So I have this written as initial total energy, but that will be the same for the whole thing, the whole time, because the energy is conserved in this. So what we really need to find is our height. So if we call this point our zero point, where the pendulum bob reaches down to its lowest point, then this is our height here. If this is the height here, this pendulum length is still the same. So this whole distance here is L. So this distance here is L minus H. Okay? What we want to do is find out what H is. So we can actually solve and figure this out. We're going to use, we're going to use cosine of theta to give me opposite adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I'm looking at just this triangle here, Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'll say cosine theta equals adjacent of L minus H over hypotenuse of L. Okay, so what I'm going to do is solve for L now, and in that way I'll be able to have H, sorry, solve for H, and then I'll have, because I know cos theta L and L. So I can actually figure out a number for H right now if I want. So I multiply L over here, so I have L cos theta equals L minus H, and then what I'm going to do is add H over to this side, and subtract L cos theta over here, so that I can solve, and I get H equals L minus L cos theta. So that's done by multiplying L over here, subtracting L cos theta over here, adding H over here. So this is now what I can actually simplify that just by factoring out the L out of this. So I have L times 1 minus cosine theta. So if I multiply the L through, I get this back again. But I just simplify it a little bit because I'm going to use this to plug this into here. So our total energy is equal to mg. Now H is this. L, 1 minus cos theta. M is 0.43 kilograms. G, 9.8 meters per second squared. L is 0.95 meters. And we have 1 minus cos theta. 
1 minus cos, and our theta is 6.5 degrees. Okay, so if I multiply all this through, I get an answer of 2.57. Three, three, seven, nine times ten to the minus two, and our unit is joules because we have kilograms, meters squared per second squared, so that is a joule. And if we round this, we get our total energy equal to uh, it's two significant digits, two point six times ten minus 2 joules. Okay, so that's the answer for this one. That's for the first one is 10. And now let's do C right here. So C, we want to find the velocity of the ball at the bottom here. The velocity of the pendulum ball here. Okay, we're going to do this using energy again. We now know the total energy. So we can see, we can, since this is our initial point, we'll call this our final point. So we have our energy total equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Now, in this case, we have no potential energy because we're at our zero point. So our height is zero and potential energy is zero. So our total energy is equal to kinetic energy final, which is just one half mass times our final velocity squared. So we just got to solve basically for V because we do know our energy, our total energy. So I multiply 2 over and divide by m, so I get 2 times total energy divided by mass is equal to Vf squared, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides now. So Vf equals root 2et over m. So let's plug in some numbers. 2 times our energy. Now we're going to plug this whole long thing in there. Make sure we keep in all our decimal places. 2 times 2.57339 times 10 to the minus 2 joules. All over our mass of 0.43 kilograms. So our final velocity. Now if we look at the units here, Joules is kilogram meter squared per second squared. The kilograms cancel out, so we're left with meter squared per second squared. Square root gives us meters per second, so that is the correct units. Our final velocity is, after rounding, 0.35 meters per second. Those are all our final answers.